Welcome back to another episode of multi -Tech Spec. Now, as you remember, or may not remember, I made a video about fog and 0.32. Now, in that video, I didn't show how to set up the DHCP server properly, which may have led to the UDP cost failure. Because the fog server was relying on DHCP service from Windows Server 2012. Now, I overlooked this, and I apologize. However, However, it's still fixable. So if you go into your Windows Server 2012 machine and you go into the DHCP option, so one way to do that is you can either go to any one of the four corners and you'll be granted with one menu. So for example, in the bottom right hand corner, if you go, you'll be greeted with this menu. If you go into the bottom left hand corner, you'll be greeted with the start button. So if you click on start or the other one, and if you go to the server manager, like so, click on DHCP, then if you left click, right click even on DHCP manager, you'll be granted with this window. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure that the DHCP server has been authorized. And the way to check that is to see if there's ticks on IPv4 and IPv6. Now if you have ticks, what that means is that the server is running properly, so it's fine, it's been authorized. But if you have a down arrow on your actual DHCP server, what you can do is you can go to DHCP, and if you right click on it and click Manage Authorized Servers, you can type in your IP address. So in my case, that's 33, and this is my server as a domain controller. That's why it's called the cloud.com, okay? And then you can just click on Authorize. So I've just unauthorized it. So if I click on authorize and type in my IP address, as you can see, it will say that it's going to become authorized. So if I click OK, I have my server back again. Okay, and now it's been authorized. So if I just refresh that, authorized. Okay, and that's confirmed by the little two ticks there. So if I just open it up again, go to DHCP manager. Yep, looks fine. Just uh, make sure that it's authorized. Manage to authorize servers. Yep, that looks fine. Just click OK. So that's already, and it's been already been added to the list of DHCP servers, so that's fine. Click on it, click on IPv4, and then click on more actions, and then click on new scope. Next. The name, I shall call it fog. Description, I shall call it fog. Click on next. And then the start and end IP address is just generally based on what you have in your actual network so if you have a lot of devices on your network or a lot of reserved space so on my network I have 192.168.0.50 as a reserved space to the 100 address because that's for my imaging WDS server my physical WDS server that's what that's for and then if you go to start IP address you can say 33 to 49 because 50 is my WDS server but 34 is a space which is not being reserved for anything else so if I say 192.168.04 and set like an end IP address of 192.168.049 that should be fine 24 bits long and we have a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 which is fine so we click next we don't need any exclusions, least duration is fine, and we want to activate the scope. Okay, so we just click yes, because we want to activate the scope, we click next, and that gives us the router default gateway. If you don't know what that is, just click on the PowerShell icon down here, and type in ipconfig, and you'll be granted with all the information that is needed. So the default gateway in my case is dot one. So, 192. 168, 0, 1. Click Next. So this is just domain name and DNS server, but uh, we want those to loop back on each other, so that's just a 127 address. And that should be fine. Shouldn't be a problem with that. Let's click Next. Win server, we don't have that, so let's click Next. And we want to activate the scope, let's click Next on that. And Finish. And as you can see, the scope is now active. Okay, so that's our address pool, 
address lease, there's nothing in there. Reservations, nothing in there. Scope options, however, we have three new options which are supposed to be there. So this is the DNS name, cloud.com, that's from the Active Directory. We see the DNS server, which in this case is the actual server itself, because the DNS server, the DNS service is running on the actual server, and therefore it comes up with that IP address, which is basically the 127 loopback address. The router is 192.168.0.1, which is okay, because as confirmed by PowerShell, that's what it's supposed to be. And as you can see, we also have 067 working here as PXE Linux.0, which was from the previous video, and the server itself is dot three four. So that's the hostname server. Okay, so um, I hope that's cleared any confusion of why the UDP cost actually failed. I'm assuming that that's what it is because the DHCP and DNS servers are reliant on Windows Server. And that's it for this video. Okay, thank you very much for watching. It's multi-tech spec. Hope to see you again soon.